Well, good morning. Give you a warm welcome to our online service as we gather at Viewfield Baptist Church. It's a great joy that you're connecting today, and um, I trust that you will meet with God, that He will minister into your life, that you will um, sense His presence, and He will lead, He will guide in all that we do this morning. You know, the Word of God says in Proverbs 3, verses 5 to 6 Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding, in all your ways acknowledge him, and he will keep your paths straight. We can trust in God in all seasons of life. He's in control, he can redeem, uh, he can restore, he is working all things together for the good of those who love him and who are called according to his purpose. So welcome, be blessed, meet with God today as his spirit moves in our lives. Please check out the website and um, the bulletin for information. You can download it from the website. Maybe you received one over email. Um, and I'll tell you what's going on in the life uh, of the church. Um, take notice of next Sunday, which is our relaunch Sunday, when I'm beginning a series in Nehemiah. And uh, we're really encouraging people who feel able, who feel confident to, to come back out in person Um, There's no social distancing anymore, it's time of fellowship, there'll be a fuller band, children's church is back to normal, and I'm starting a series in Nehemiah, so it'd be great to see if you feel comfortable uh, coming, it'd be great to to be together, to sing and to worship the Lord, our awesome God. Let's just pray as we begin this service just now. Lord, I just thank you for your goodness, I thank you for your kindness. I thank you for your mercy. Thank you, Lord God, that you are working in all seasons of our life. Lord God, that you are in control. Lord, that you are sovereign, that you're still on the throne. And Lord, we bow the knee before you today. We ask that you would move in our midst, that you would bless, that you would speak, and that, Lord God, you would be glorified in all that takes place in this service. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let's respond to... God's word, as we read um, in Proverbs 3, 5 to 6, uh, in worship, in, in sung worship. So let's sing together.
Spirit conceiving Christ the Son, Jesus our Savior. now come to the end of our series on prayer, so let's remind ourselves of the things we have learned. What is prayer? Prayer is talking with God, or communicating with God. Why do we pray? God invites us to have a relationship with him, and an important part of a friendship or a relationship with someone is that we spend time together and communicate with one another. So our friendship with God will grow stronger as we spend time communicating with him, both talking and listening. Also, last week we thought about the fact that prayer makes a difference. God listens to us and responds when we bring our requests and desires to him. How should we pray? 
It's good to begin by praising God for being such an awesome, wonderful, all-powerful God who made us and loves us. And we should remember to thank him for all the wonderful things he has done for us and all the good things he gives us. We need to remember to say sorry for the wrong things we've done and the times when we've been selfish or not done the things that God has asked us to do. And God also wants us to bring our requests to him, praying for ourselves and for other people. Where can we pray? Anywhere. God has promised to be with us wherever we go, and that means we can talk with him wherever we are. So of course we can pray in church, but we can also pray at home, at school, at work, when we're at the shops, or out for a walk in the countryside. Wherever you are, you can talk with God. So when can we pray? Any time. It's good to set aside some specific quality time to spend with God, just as you would with a person you love. But we can also talk with God at any time. Perhaps a quick, help me God, in a difficult situation. Or take a moment to say thank you when something good happens. How did you get on with last week's challenge to pray about a particular situation every day? When you look back now, can you see how God responded? Did he say yes or no? Or wait a while to your request? Or did he do something completely different from what you had expected? We may have reached the end of our series on prayer, but of course God longs for us to keep on praying and spending time with him every day of every week of every year. So let's finish our series with some Bible verses about prayer. This is what Paul said in his letter to the Philippians. Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all he has done. Then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. Oh, my God.
Hi there. Have you ever asked the question, why do I pray? Why do we pray? How do we pray? Now, if you've ever asked that question, then within that question, there are many different questions that we can ask. Now, putting all these questions together and finding answers will enhance our prayer lives. So how about questions like petition? The Bible talks about petitioning the Lord. How do we petition the Lord in prayer? Intercession. How do we intercede for others? Perhaps for those that we love that we want to see saved. Perhaps for friends and family in the church. Perhaps for our communities or even our nation. Then how about unanswered prayer? Do you, like me, have unanswered prayer in your life? If so, why? The question then becomes, does God ignore some prayers? Or does he answer all prayers? How about contemplation? How do we contemplate what we feel the Lord is telling us? How do we contemplate from his word and through prayer what the Lord's will is? Listening. Do we just listen in prayer? Do we talk in prayer? Should we just listen? Should we just talk? Or is it a combination as in a conversation? And finally, tying all those things together is this factor of spiritual warfare. What is spiritual warfare? Does it carry on while we're praying? Does praying negate spiritual warfare? Now, if you have any of these questions or have had in the past, then please feel free to join us for this prayer course that we will be running for eight weeks, starting on Thursday the 9th of September at 7pm. All are welcome, whether this is your first time doing it or whether you've done it before. If you've done it before, your wisdom and experience would be very much appreciated as we make this journey. So let's journey together and hope to see you there. Bye bye. Well, let's continue our worship as we pray uh, together. Let's join together in prayer. Lord, thank you that we can turn to you in prayer, that your word says that you incline an ear towards us um, as we cry out to you. Throughout the Psalms, we see the psalmist crying out to you. We see the psalmist calling upon the name of the Lord, being open, being honest at times, sharing their heart cry, sharing their pain, rejoicing um, and Lord God I just thank you that your word says in James 5 verse 16 that the earnest prayers of a righteous person have great power and produce a wonderful results God you're a prayer answering God we are called to call out to you uh, in all seasons we call out to you and you will answer us we seek you with all our hearts we will find you and we need your help our help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. We need you every hour. We need you, God. I want to pray today for those who are despairing, those who are depressed, those who are downcast, those who are struggling with anxiety. Lord, I pray that your peace would be poured into their hearts. Lord, I ask that you, the Prince of Peace, would, would give your peace in the midst of the storm of their situation. Lord, I pray for those who are grieving. Lord, may you comfort those who mourn. Lord, I pray for those in hospital. We pray for Alan. We pray for Mary, Lord God. Just draw close to them. Be their strength. Be their help. Lord, we pray for many who are going through challenging times. And Lord, just now we want to bring our own prayers to you. Um, for the people and the situations that are on our hearts. Hear our prayer, Lord. And Lord, today we just thank you for all that you're doing in the life of the church. We thank you for the new ministries that are starting. We thank you 
for existing ministries that are developing as we, we move out of lockdown. Lord, we just give you thanks for all that you've been doing in the life of the church, for new faces, for new people, for growth in our family. Uh, Lord, we give you the praise, we give you the glory, and may we all have a humble heart and celebrate Jesus and celebrate what he's doing and have a boldness in proclaiming the gospel. That is our desire, is to share the good news of Jesus Christ. Thank you that we're able to do that regularly in our lives. Thank you that we can do that Sunday by Sunday to call people to put their faith and their trust in Jesus Christ. This is a church that cares about mission, that cares about evangelism. And Lord, I just pray that that would always be our focus. To love God, to love our neighbour, to love our enemies, to be about the work of the Great Commandment and the Great Commission, to go and to make disciples. Lord, I want to pray today for your word. I pray that your word would speak into our lives and into our situation. Lord, I want to pray today as well for our world. Again, we particularly pray for the situation in Afghanistan. We pray for peace. We pray, Lord God, for those who are fleeing for their lives. We pray, Lord God, for those who are um, in fear and terror, for those who've been bereaved, Lord, for refugees. God, we just ask that you would be at work in all that is happening there. And that the light of Christ would shine in the midst of darkness. And we pray also for the situation in Haiti as they rebuild after the devastating um, natural disaster there. Lord, we just pray again for leaders, for, um, for people who are working at supporting those who've lost loved ones, those who are unwell, rebuilding of housing and infrastructure. Lord, I just pray for organisations as well that are working in that nation. Lord, we just long and desire to see your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So Lord, lead us in this service today, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. This is the last psalm we're going to look at in this little series on some favorite psalms before we begin a new series in Nehemiah. And today we're going to look at Psalm 142. So here is the word of the Lord. I cry aloud to the Lord, I lift up my voice to the Lord for mercy. I pour out my complaint before him, before him I tell my trouble. When my spirit grows faint within me, it is you who know my way. In the path where I walk, men have hidden a snare for me. Look to my right and see, no one is concerned for me. I have no refuge, no one cares for my life. I cry to you, O Lord. You are my refuge, my portion in the land of the living. Listen to my cry, for I am in desperate need. Rescue me from those who pursue me, for they are too strong for me. Set me free from my prison, that I may praise your name. Then the righteous will gather about me because of your goodness to me. May God bless the reading and reflection from his word today. You know, today... My title for this message is How to be Triumphant in Trouble. This is a question that each one of us can identify with because all of us at times will face troubles in this life. The psalmist himself cries out to the Lord in verse 2 of Psalm 142, I tell the Lord my trouble. It was Joseph Parker, the London preacher, who said no preacher would ever lack a congregation if he preached to troubled hearts. Any preacher must speak and preach words filled with compassion and must be filled with a love for their hearers. I remember Andrew Rawlinson, who used to be the ministry advisor of the BUS, saying some of the most valuable work a minister does is from the pulpit they must speak with love they must speak with a pastor's heart you know i love this church family so much i'm the under shepherd to to play a role in caring for 
the sheep, and I care for you. I love you. I'm here for you. And it doesn't just follow me. We have many who are seeking to be involved in pastoral care, and all of us have a responsibility to care for one another. But as your pastor today, I speak with a heart full of compassion and love for you. You know, it breaks my heart at times as a pastor to see people go through trials and troubles and seasons of suffering in their life, but it's such a holy privilege to be invited in to painful situations and to be able to speak the Word of God into those situations. The number of people who've come into my office in tears, weeping, desperate, wanting prayer, wanting support, and what a joy it is to to point them to a God who loves them, to pray for them, to have a listening ear and to speak the word. Here in Psalm 142, we find the writer David in great trouble, and the whole psalm teaches us how to be triumphant in trouble, not how to escape trouble, to be free from it, but how to glorify God in the midst of trouble. A mature believer understands that the day of trouble will come and that often God has much to teach us during these times. Jesus himself said to his disciples in John 16 verse 33, in this world you will have trouble. So let's consider what this psalm teaches us about how to be triumphant in trouble. So first of all, what are we told about David's trouble? You know, David at this time was a fugitive and his fortunes were at their lowest ebb. His reputation was gone. He was an outcast. He was alone. He was on the run from powerful enemies. He was hiding in a cave. He was alone. He was frightened. He was in desperate need. He was in a season of real trouble. This is the last of the Psalms attributed to David that relate to the years in which he was fleeing from Saul. In verse 7, David asked that the Lord would set him free from his prison. Whether his prison was the cave of Adullam, 1 Samuel 22, or a cave in Engedi, 1 Samuel 24, we cannot be sure. However, it is obvious that he was in danger, that he was depressed, that he felt abandoned. Have you ever felt like that? Maybe you're feeling like that right now, even as we consider the journey through this pandemic. Maybe you feel in danger. Maybe you feel depressed. Maybe you feel isolated. Maybe you feel abandoned, even abandoned by God. There are a number of different things that David mentions that give us an insight into the trouble that he faced. Verse 3, we learn that his trouble was severe. My spirit grows faint within me, David says. He was feeling weary and faint because of his trouble. Some translations say that he was overwhelmed with trouble. Almost like a boat that was being overwhelmed by the stormy seas. He was sinking. He was desperate. If you look on to Verse 6, we see here that David expresses that he is in desperate need. Listen to my cry, for I am in desperate need. He's desperate. This isn't a minor irritation like a splinter in the finger, but rather a serious threat to his very being. It's a crisis. Some translations say that David was brought very low. He had got lower and lower and he was at rock bottom. His trouble was severe. Perhaps you're in the midst of an overwhelming experience at this time. Maybe in your personal life. There's a financial issue. There's a family issue. There's a health issue. And you just feel at rock bottom. David's trouble was severe. David also tells us in this psalm that others had contributed to the severity of his trouble. In verse 3 we are told, In the path where I walk, men have hidden a snare for me. People had set a trap 
for him. In verse 6 he says, Rescue me from those who pursue me. It's one thing to be attacked by people you don't know, but it's another thing to face opposition from so-called friends. It must have been so hard for David to be let down and hurt by so-called friends. Has that ever happened to you? It's a painful thing. It's a painful experience. David tells us that others had contributed to the severity of his trouble. He also tells us that no one seemed to care. Verse 4, he cries out, Look to my right and see, no one is concerned for me. I have no refuge. No one cares for my life. He felt alone. He felt abandoned. And it appeared that no one cared. It's one thing to go through trouble. But what makes it even worse is when you have to go through it alone. That's why the local church is so important. We are there to support one another and help one another through difficult times. Listen to Paul's words to the local church at Rome, Romans 12, verses 15 to 21. Rejoice with those who rejoice and mourn with those who mourn. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be proud, but be willing to associate with people of low position. Do not be conceited. Do not repay anyone evil for evil. Be careful to do what is right in the eyes of everybody. If it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. Do not take revenge, my friends, but leave room for God's wrath. For it is written, it is mine to avenge. I will repay, says the Lord. On the contrary, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink. In doing this, you will heap burning coals on his head. Do not overcome by do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. You know, it's been a joy to meet with more people in person now and to realize that we need one another. You know, it's been great to be able to, to do church um, through visual and technological means during this difficult time, and we'll continue to provide this for those for uh, whatever reason still can't come out. To meet in person which we totally understand and you are missed uh, you're still part of the family this is just as valuable at the moment as what we're doing in person but we are trying to transition back into the new normal uh, and i just encourage you to just to pray into when the right time will be for you to meet again because i know personally i can speak that um it's been a real blessing just now to have more and more fellowship with people and to do life uh, together with one another. We are family and you are deeply loved by God and loved by your church family. But David here feels alone. He felt no one understood. And that was not true as the Lord was with him. The Lord understood. Listen to Paul's words again about God's help even during difficult times. Words that he writes to Timothy, 2 Timothy 4 and verses 16 to 18. We're told there, at my first offence no one came to my support, but everyone deserted me. May it not be held against them. But the Lord stood at my side and gave me strength, so that through me the message might be fully proclaimed, and all the Gentiles might hear it. And I was delivered from the lion's mouth. The Lord will rescue me from every evil attack and bring me safely to his heavenly kingdom. To him be glory forever and ever. Amen. Even when we feel completely alone, when we feel everyone has deserted us, the Lord is always there. It's a guarantee. He's promised. So we've considered the trouble that David faced. But more important is how he responded to that trouble. So how did David react to his trouble? Well, it's imperative to consider how David reacted during this season of trouble. As we consider this, we can learn some valuable principles as to how we can be triumphant in trouble. Not how to escape trouble, to be free from it, but how to glorify God in the midst of trouble. Let me just mention what David didn't do. He did not brood over his trouble 
and do nothing about it. He did not indulge in self-pity. He didn't have a pity party. He didn't become bitter and rebellious. So what did he do? When trouble overwhelmed him. Well, first of all, we see in verses 1 to 2 that David brought his trouble before the Lord in prayer. In verses 1 and 2, we're told that David prays with an urgency and an intensity in bringing his troubles before the Lord. Four phrases emphasize the nature of his prayer. Verse 1, he cries aloud to the Lord. Verse 1 as well, he lifts his voice to the Lord. Verse 2, I pour out my complaint before him. I tell my trouble. David did the right thing by bringing the whole matter before the Lord. There are so many examples in Scripture of people who in the moment of trouble reached out to the Lord for help. We could think about someone like King Hezekiah after receiving a, a threatening letter from an enemy. He, he cries out to God for help, to the sovereign God for help. We could think of what Mary did when the wine ran short at the wedding. Let me just read John 2 and verse 3. John 2 and verse 3. When the wine was gone, Jesus' mother said to him, They have no more wine. She spoke to Jesus about it, about the situation. We could think of the early church who were so burdened and troubled because Peter was in prison. Look at Acts 12 verse 5 and, and how they responded when Peter was in prison. We're told there, so Peter was kept in prison but the church was earnestly praying to God for him. Bringing the situation before God in prayer. Bringing their trouble, their burdens and casting them on to the Lord, bringing God the trouble that we're facing and laying it in his everlasting arms. To cast our burdens, our anxieties onto the Lord. They all turn to the Lord. This is how we should react in times of trouble. We should bring the whole matter and bring ourselves before the Lord and ask for his gracious help. And as David did this, what happened? As he brought his troubles before the Lord, his faith and his trust in God was deepened. You can sense David's perspective changing as the psalm progresses. He begins despondent, but as he prays, we can sense him reaffirming his trust in the Lord. There are two phrases in the psalm that make this point clearly. First of all, God is his guide. Verse 3, he says, it is you who know the way. Here as David walks with the Lord, he is facing various obstacles, but he knows and he states now, it is you who know the way. He trusts the Lord to lead and to guide, almost like trusting a compass through the mist and the rain. But secondly, also, he says that God is his refuge. Verse 5, you are my refuge. The word means a safe place. It's such a beautiful word, refuge. Such a sweet word. Here in David's trouble and conflict, he testifies that in God he has found safety. That is surely faith triumphant. In the face of trouble. I'm in a season of trouble. But God is my guide. He knows the way through it. And God is my safe place. Even in the storm. What a God I serve. And as this faith increased in David. He became filled with more and more hope. In the midst of what humanly speaking. Appeared to be a hopeless situation. He was filled with hope. He was filled with confidence concerning the future because God was in control. It's one thing to trust God for the present moment, but what about the future, the unknown 
future? What about tomorrow or next week and next month and next year? Shall I come out my trouble? If we lose hope, we become filled with despair. But David didn't lose his hope in his God. You know, to hope in the Lord is to overcome despair and fear about the future. And David had hope. Through the eyes of faith, he sees a day when he is free from his prison and praising the Lord. Also a day when he gathers with the righteous because of God's goodness to him. We see this in verses 7 to 8. As God's people, whatever we face, we are a people of hope. The best is yet to come for the Christian. Why? Because of Christ and his victory over sin and death and evil. Jesus says to his disciples in John 16 verse 33, In this world you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. We are overcomers in Jesus Christ. In 1 Peter 1 verses 3 to 9 we're reminded of the wonderful hope we have as believers through faith in Christ. Let me just read those words to you just now. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ in his great mercy he has given us a new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, and into an inheritance that can never perish, spoil, or fade, kept in heaven for you, who through faith are shielded by God's power until the coming of the salvation that is ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while you may have had to suffer grief in all kinds of trials. These have come so that your faith of greater worth than gold, which perishes even though refined by fire, may be proved genuine and may result in praise, glory and honour when Jesus Christ is revealed. Though you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and are filled with an inexpressible and glorious joy. For you are receiving the goal of your faith, the salvation of your souls. Praise God for a living hope. It was G.K. Chesterton who once said, Hope means hoping when things are hopeless or it is no virtue at all. As long as matters are really hopeful, hope is mere flattery or platitude. It's only when everything is hopeless that hope begins to be a strength. Here then is the way to be triumphant in trouble, to engage in prayer, and prayer will strengthen faith and faith will give hope and confidence concerning the future and God's deliverance. It was C.H. Spurgeon who once said, The gloom of the cave is all over this psalm. And yet, as if standing at the mouth of the cave itself, David sees a bright light beyond. I don't know what you're going through just now. If you're in a time of trouble, you're in the cave, you're in the darkness of this trial. Remember this, there is a bright light beyond. Do not lose hope. Put your trust in God himself and all will be well. Let's pray. God, I just thank you for your word. I thank you that in Christ we can triumph in trouble. I thank you that you're always working. You're always with us. You're working all things together for the good of those who love you and are called according to your purpose. That the best is always yet to come for the believer. The Lord God, just lead us on by your spirit. Help our faith to rise. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let's sing together um, to lead us to our time of communion this morning. Be your name in the land that is planted.
bountiful Your streams of abundance flow Blessed be your name Blessed be your name When I'm found in the desert place Though I walk through the wilderness Blessed be your name and every blessing Blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your name, blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your glorious name, blessed be your name when the sun's shining down on me, when the world's all as it should be. Blessed be your name Blessed be your name On the road marked with suffering There's pain in the offering Blessed be your name and every blessing Blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your glorious name. Blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your glorious name. Blessed be your name You give and take away You give and take away My heart will choose to say Lord, blessed be your name Blessed be the name of the Lord Blessed be your name Blessed be the name Blessed be your glorious name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your glorious name. That's a great privilege to gather around the Lord's table today and to remember again the great sacrifice of our precious Saviour Jesus who laid down his life, shed his blood so that we can be forgiven of our sins, so that we can enter in to our relationship with God the Father. And, and we know that it's only by grace that we can enter, only by grace that we can stand, not by our human endeavour but by the blood of the Lamb and we regularly need reminded of that that we can only have a seat at this table because of God's grace in Christ not because of our works not because we are worthy we are not worthy but in him in Christ we are because of what he has done because we're justified through our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ so we come today to celebrate his goodness to us in Christ to celebrate all that God has done and all that God is doing and all that God will do as we focus our eyes on Jesus Christ. Let me read some words from 1 Corinthians chapter 15 as we continue a theme of, of hope uh, in Christ um, and that reality that the cross still stands 
and the, the one that we remember is our risen Lord as well. So we can triumph in trouble. Now, brothers, I want to remind you of the gospel I preached to you, which you have received and on which you have taken your stand. By this gospel you are saved if you hold firmly to the word I preached to you. Otherwise you have believed in vain. For what I received I passed on to you as of first importance, that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day according to to the scriptures and that he appeared to Peter and then to the twelve. After that he appeared to more than 500 of the brothers at the same time, most of whom are still living though some have died. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles and last of all he appeared to me also as to one abnormally born. For I am the least of the apostles and do not even deserve to be called an apostle because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God I am what I am. And his grace to me was not without effect. Though I worked harder than all of them, yet not I, but the grace of God that was with me. Whether then it was I or they, this is what we preach. And this is what you believed. This is the gospel in which we have taken our stand. Let's pray together. Lord God, in these moments, we thank you for your presence. We thank you for your grace and your mercy shown in Christ. Lord, today, through faith in Jesus, we have that relationship with you. We thank you that you're always with us. We thank you that you are in charge and you are in control. You're sovereign. We thank you, Lord, that we can completely trust in you. Forgive us for the times when we think we know better than you. Forgive us for the times when we almost think we're in control. Lord, help us to give up our control to you. Help us to fall into your loving arms. Help us to humbly listen to you and serve you. Help us to have faith like a little child, totally dependent upon the parent. Lord, we need you. Every hour we need you. We thank you for your love and we thank you for the demonstration of your love that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. And as we eat the bread today, we remember the body of Jesus given for us. And as we drink the cup, we remember the blood of Christ shed for us. We remember and we give thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. On the night you would be betrayed, the Lord Jesus Christ took a loaf of bread and he broke it. And he said, this is my body given for you. Whenever you eat this, do so in remembrance of me. Eat the bread now and remember the body of Christ given for you. same way after supper the Lord Jesus took the cup and he said this cup is a new covenant sealed by my blood whenever you drink this do so in remembrance of me let's drink together as a sign of our unity in Christ Let's pray together. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him, so that you will overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Have a great Sunday. We'll connect again soon.